Greetings friends, I'm Thomas of Light Metaphors. Thanks again for tuning in the channel. Um, and if you've subscribed, thanks a lot. God bless you. Um, if this is your first time, I hope you're blessed and encouraged. You know, Light Metaphors is all about um, life in the spirit uh, where I exercise my gift of teaching um, on topics of living in the spirit of dreams, visions, uh, supernatural encounters that I've had in my life as well as the creativity uh, that God's given us as human beings uh, in particular visionary art that God has blessed me with um, you know it was years ago um, I think in 2011 where um, not many people know this but I've uh, I was living in San Diego serving under a ministry and uh, and I ended up one day having real bad pain in my stomach and it was pretty uh, intense and it, um, <clears throat> it led me to going to the hospital and uh, they found out that uh, there was my appendix was ready to burst so they removed it and it was a quick operation it seemed like man is that it and it was short and I was out of the hospital but uh, as I was at home uh, seemingly recovering something uh, turned out to be worse and it kept getting worse and worse and I was getting uh, feverish, heavily feverish. My stomach was bloated and bile was coming out of my system. And it got to the point where it was very, uh, I, was, I literally felt like I was dying and I had a dream where I was in like a, an empty uh, uh, wash, like a cement wash where, where when heavy rains come, floods come through, the water comes washing through and, and there was a very heavy mud uh, wash uh, coming in down this thing and I was in it and I tried I, I knew I had to get out of it and or else I would be swept away and as, as I was climbing up and I crawled up and I escaped it so I woke up and I was like this was during that time where I was going through deep pain after the operation um, and by the grace of God my uh, cousin who came to visit me and at that time I was literally could barely walk around uh, I would literally almost crawl and he picked me up put me in the vehicle took me back to the hospital and they did a lot of tests and I was in a, a serious just intense pain even in the waiting room finally they got me in and they had took a lot of tests they had me drink that white liquid it was like a milk almost and did all kinds of x-rays and they found out that a, a few weeks or a couple weeks I think a week and a half or that I had a, a infection within my uh, um, uh, stomach uh, where the operation was and it was actually a, they found that there was a, a abscess in there and boy that was intense because they they told me that I would not live uh, if I didn't uh, have pay, give attention to this and so they took put me through more tests and stuff they found this abscess they put a probe in there, a big syringe or something, and then they ended up putting a tube in there. And I was in the hospital again, this time just with the tube in there and antibiotics. Next thing you know, they told me, you know, you're going to, we're going to have to do a, put a pick catheter into in you. And, um, and I was like, well, in my mind, I'm like, what the heck's that? And they put me through uh, a process where the guy came in with a suit, a white suit, and had like almost like a tent over him and over me. And, and so they put this pit catheter into me, explaining that it would go into my artery, into my vein, in my artery, into my heart to pump antibiotics. And it turned out like uh, I ended up in the hospital for uh, almost a month. And man, that was the most intense time of my life. It just tested me and challenged my. Uh, my life uh, 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 heavily and so it was like night after night I'd hear people in the other rooms in pain and I was in uh, pain and, and uh, luckily I was they were uh, putting the um, antibiotics in me and and I was I was uh, I was just in a place where I wondered if I was going to make it through and and challenged with these thoughts over and over to the point where I just gave up my life whether I was going to live or not I surrender it to the Lord uh, in the hospital where I laid there day, night after night, day after day. And so one of the times I had a dream in which uh, in the dream um, I was sitting next to uh, uh, one of my roommates that I roommate with in San Diego and uh, he was a son of, prophet of a prophetic minister known um, and I looked at him and then um, he was on my left and to my right I turned and I looked and uh, it was Bob Jones who is a prophet a seer prophet and Bob Jones touched me uh, on my side and when he touched me he says you will live and not die and then he said will you come to eat with me I want to honor you as my son and so I got up and he went to the uh, restaurant I got up and followed along and when I walked into the restaurant 
I came in with this staff I was holding and uh, they were in the room and he was at the table and I was leaning on this staff and this is a staff I've spoken about in my uh, other uh, um, other um, videos in the past regarding um, how God uses uh, objects in our dreams that are uh, uh, very uh, that are, we're, that are um, close to us, objects that we own or things uh, a, as metaphors. And I've, I've had this staff in other dreams and this staff was given to me uh, from New Hampshire, from the Pinnacle Mountain in New Hampshire. It was given to me and I ha I've had that in dreams. So I come in with this staff and I'm leaning on it and I say to Bob Jones, you know, the enemy is using the arts to depict and display his, his darkness and, and his language and to impart or to influence people visually and uh, I said something like that where uh, the enemy's using the arts creativity and the arts to influence people uh, and uh, depict the language of darkness and so and and I said but and God has given me a visual gift a visionary gift a prophetic gift to be able to receive the things of heaven to see the the language of heaven to see visual pictures and portray and depict those that would release his light I said, uh, uh, yeah, that's what I remember. I, I mentioned, I said that, and then the dream shifted, and I'm in line, and I'm going to uh, get the food, and I was gonna. Uh, it's like I had a tray, and I, and as I was going to get my food, my mind uh, in the dream, I want, I thought to myself, well, where am I going to get money to buy this? And and then I looked down, and my pl plate was full of money. And it's funny how even in the dream, God was showing me my uh, poverty mindset and how we can just see a poverty. God shows us things. Dreams are raw and they'll show you as it is. And I was seeing that I had a poverty mindset, but God was showing me, you're going to live. You're not going to die. You've been destined to uh, continue on in life. Uh, you have a destiny to bring the visual arts. I call it visionary arts, not just prophetic arts. Prophetic arts to me is kind of too limited. Um, when I use the uh, word visionary art, it's more broad. I can take it into new different arenas with uh, um, different um, people outside of Christian, the Christian community and influence in that area as well. And so, you know, I call it visionary art. So it's like God dest said, you're going to continue in your destiny uh, to bring forth visual arts, the prophetic, the metaphoric language of metaphoric arts, light metaphors, I call it, and uh, to influence to bring the light of the knowledge of God through visual pictures and 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 that you're going to have all you need is going to be provided for you to fulfill your destiny the finances and everything and that's what the platter was showing me with the money and so i woke up from that dream so god took me through a allowed me to go through a, a very deep valley uh it was a valley of the shadow of death for me and it was pretty intense you know um i can remember years ago i used to have tsunami uh, dreams things uh, tsunamis like and I'd always escape them by the grace of God. Thank you, Lord. I'd, I'd, I'd get away. I'd get into a high place. And so oftentimes tsunami dreams uh, within that context is something negative trying to overtake you. And it was destructive, these dreams. I could see where people were getting hit and sucked out. And But I, I, uh, all those dreams, I, I escaped. You know, God allowed me to escape. And so I believe that this uh, that encounter I had in 2011, uh, staying in the hospital for about a month, and... Um, it was was a tsunami um, uh, uh, trial, if you will, a trial that over basically was overtaking me. Where I surrendered to God at some point. It's like I came to a death. I said I made a deep decision where I'm gave I gave my life over to God. I said, Lord, I don't know if I'm going to live tomorrow, but I just surrender my life to you. And so the Lord took me out of that. Uh, they they had me in the hospital for about a month, and when they released me. You know, I was put in a wheelchair. My mom came and picked me up, and I still had the tube hanging. I had to, and I had to have a nurse come to the house and uh, help to um, administer the the uh, antibiotics and then push them in through the pick catheter. And then I had uh, went and had the pick catheter removed and the the tube removed. And man, it was a, what a trial! And um, I, during that season, I was serving, uh, uh, living at his feet ministries, Jeremy and Miranda Nelson. It was a pretty intense time, but. In the midst of all that, we had pretty powerful encounters, and and um, but yeah, I had uh, it was after getting out of the hospital, I was getting a pile up of bills and 
so many things were coming at my life, uh, still trying to destroy me, um, even bring me to a point of wanting to destroy myself, wanting to commit suicide because of all the things that were happening to me, one thing after another. And the enemy was seeking to create within me like a mentality. Uh, uh, he was trying to uh, put a, create a web of expectation of uh, a mentality, a mindset of expectation of negative things happening over and over because things were just hitting me over and over. But uh, the Lord, by, by His mercy and grace, He broke me up out of that. He took me out of that. And so I'm going to share uh, uh, some of a, uh, the product of what, uh, from uh, the gift that God's given me, this visual arts gift um, on my left. And today I'm going to share about that. Um, and this is uh, a piece that I created that, that the Lord enabled me to bring forth. And it was based out of an encounter I had with Jesus um, as I was soaking on the floor. You know, I went through a season of learning how to just lay down uh, and to soak in the Lord, to rest, to to uh, soak in His presence, uh, just to be with Him. And in that time, I was going into a visionary experience whereby uh, in my imagination, I began to see like uh, uh, a tunnel, like, and I saw Jesus at the end of the tunnel. It was like a tube, almost like you can say it was a portal. And I saw him, and he tossed me a key. And as I received the key, I asked him in this visionary experience. When we go into a vision, it, uh, to go, uh, it's it becomes an interactive vision. Um, when we begin to engage with the Lord and ask Him questions, and He responds back. <clears throat> and uh, so in this, uh, um, in this visionary experience, I saw the Lord toss a key to me, and I thought in my mind, I said, Lord, what are keys? And the voice of the Lord came back to me, and He says, uh, Revelatory thoughts and images are likened to keys that enable you to enter into a place. In other words, unlock a door, go in, enter into a place and experience what's there. So revelatory thoughts and images are likened to keys which enable you to enter into a place and experience what's there. And so I came out of that and I was like, wow, man, um, I'd really like to uh, draw something like that, paint something uh, about that experience. And, and so this is the product of that. And I entitled this painting, The Lion of Revelation. The Lion of Revelation. Because in the book of Revelation, um, it speaks of uh, Jesus Christ where the prophet uh, it's, it says that in Revelation 5.5, 5, Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Again, um, uh, but one of the 24 elders, the, the elders say to me, Stop weeping. Look, 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 the lion of the tribe of Judah, the Heir to David's throne has won the victory. He is worthy to open the scroll and its seven seals. He is worthy to open the scroll and the seven seals. So the Lion of the tribe of Judah. So I, I entitled this uh, the Lion of Revelation because Jesus is the very one who is worthy. And He's the very one that can only, uh, can alone open up a seal. That which is sealed. You know, in the book of Jan Daniel, He went through uh, incredible visions regarding things to come. And uh, as He saw and went through these things, the Lord said, uh, seal up the, close up and seal the, uh, the scrolls basically seal up, seal this up so that uh, for it's for an, a time to come. And so, um, you know, things are shown to us, but they're sealed and there's things that are sealed that are opened up to us, um, as Jesus said, uh, uh, for there is nothing hidden that would not be made known that's negative, as well as uh, mysteries, hidden mysteries, like Daniel 2.22, where um, uh, he says that um, he reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. So he reveals deep and hidden things. So Jesus said um, that there is, for there is nothing hidden that would not be made known, nothing concealed that would not be brought out into the open. So he's the one that discloses things. He's the one that conceals things, but he also opens things up to for us to see, to know, to experience, to to uh, make, to see. He makes us to see. That's the Hebrew, that's the Greek word enlightened. Uh, it's the Greek word photizo. He makes us to see things. He opens up our eyes. And so you can see in the artwork here that there are above the lion's head are seven keys that are dropping down. And within those key handles, there's eyeballs. And those eyes speak of open, uh, the making your eyes to see. They're blue eyes. They're eyes that speak of, uh, com communicate the revelation 
revelation, that realm of revelation. You know, blue is the color of revelation, communion and revelation. I learned that from John Paul Jackson, but I knew more. I knew I knew about the colors before that, but I knew I, I gained more understanding from uh, uh, John Paul as I uh, sat under his teaching and stuff. And so, like blue is the color for revelation. Uh, communion. And so uh, the Hebrew word for a key is the word maftayak, maftayak. And it actually means an opener, an opener, an eye opener, uh, an opener. It means to open something up. And so uh, as revelation comes to us it, and we access something from God, it, it brings the power, it brings the power to open up something to us. It, it begins to open us up so we can know something and see something. And Jesus begins to release things, these keys to us, these revelatory thoughts and pictures can come to us. And as we access those things, grab hold of those things, there's the power for us to enter into an experience with God. You know, it's very important to, um, uh, to embrace what he gives us, to hold fast to it, to retain it, to seize it like an eagle seizes uh, uh, its, its prey, just claws it down, the talons of an eagle claws down on, on the meat that he's after. With the meat of revelation, the strong meat of God's revelation, when it comes to us, we need to be like an eagle and seize upon it. That's a good a characteristics of a good soil. Jesus says his seed was sown on various soils. One of the soils was described as good soil. Uh, and, and he says that it is those who retain, and that's the word meaning to hold fast to, to seize upon, to hold down. And so when this comes and we take that type of attitude and responsibility, more is given to us. God begins to open it up to us. He begins to open up understanding to us. And we enter into something that we haven't experienced or entered into before. We begin to see something we did not see. We get photizoed, enlightened. We are, we are made to to see. Our eyes become brightened. Again, that's the, the eyeballs in the key represent uh, the openings. Like in the Quakers uh, movement, uh, when the Quakers, uh, George Fox of the Quakers, and, uh, and the Quakers uh, in, in the beginning, they, many of their write, in their writings, they spoke of revelation, described it as an opening. They, they received an opening for the Lord, from the Lord. That's what it is. It's an opening. So the revelation, the keys of revelation bring an opening and you see that here the the lion I, I painted a mist just blowing through him and that mist represents the spirit of revelation it's a mist I'm reminded of uh, uh, um, Larry Randolph once years ago I heard him ask the Lord what's your favorite color and, and, and the Lord basically asked him to look up and it was a blue sky and so uh, it's an incredible uh, color for revelation it's a color uh, of revelation and it's a mist it's like a flow and revelation is progressive and it's a flow and and you see that the line of revelation is is the line of revelation of the flow of revelation he's the giver of revelation um, and on his right eye under his right eye you can see right here um, <coughs> There's the Hebrew word that I use often in my artwork. I pretty much put it on all of my artwork, and it's the Hebrew word haza, and it means to envision something in a vision. It means to see, to behold, to contemplate with pleasure, pleasure, to contemplate with pleasure, to have a vision of, to see, to behold. It also means to prophesy. So envisioned, envisioned. So I envisioned something in a vision. I saw something in a vision. Haza. It's under the right eye. Um, and we can find this Hebrew word uh, in the Old Testament and it's often uh, related to and tied to an ecstatic, spiritually, uh, a spiritual experience, an ecstatic experience which the prophets and the seers had. And so, Haza, the prophet or the seer, Hazad. He, he envisioned something in a vision, haza, and we can find we find as we study this word we can f we find that it's rooted and tied to the word hosa or uh, hosa or raa, and that's the Hebrew word for a seer, one who sees something in a vision or a beholder of visions, uh, a stargazer, a beholder of visions and a stargazer. So the hosa. Uh, Hazaz, the Hosa, the seer Hazaz envisions something in a vision that he receives from the line of revelation. And so the lines are 
uh, the line of revelation Jesus is full of revelation he's worthy to open up the scroll he's worthy to crack it open and and bring out what is within what I tell you in the dark proclaim in the light what is whispered in your ear in the inner rooms uh, proclaim from the rooftops and God wants to uh, whisper things to us whispering of the place out of the place of intimacy gets right up close to you and whispers <laughs> what an awesome privilege and blessing, man, that God would whisper something to us. He would give us the secrets of its heart. And He trusts us. It's a sign of trust because He does, it says in His Word uh, that um, do not cast your pearls to swine or give um, sacred things. Uh, you know, uh, to, uh, to those basically saying, do not give the sacred things, the pearls, the precious things, the, the, the revelations you give to people who have a, 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 a soily heart that's not a, a heart that's good soil. Uh, the, it's Don't give those things to people with attitudes that are, are swine-like, if you will. They're, they, they don't value or they don't um, consider as precious the things of the Spirit, the things that God has given you personally, the secret things. That some of these things are just personally for us and Him. I mean, for, for us, period, that He's given them for us personally so that we can retain and hold and treasure within us. And so like the Lion of Revelation wants to give you um, he wants to give you the keys to allow you to open up uh, uh, to open up things to you so you can experience these things by revelation. Paul said in Galatians, when it was, uh, God was pleased to reveal His Son in me. God was pleased to reveal His Son in me. It's God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, to give you revelation, to give you insight, to, to make you to see, to uh, in, enlighten your eyes. He, it's God's good desire and pleasure to give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that comes from Him, the Lion of Revelation, Jesus, the only one who is worthy to open it up. And uh, so He wants us to enter into a place where we, we begin to see these things and, uh, and, and step into them, experience these things. You know, I heard uh, my friend Jeremy Nelson once uh, share about uh, his a season he spent traveling with Bobby Connor and... and um, uh, you know, Bobby Connor talked about like uh, how like the keys uh, are, are uh, encounters and experiences that he has had in his life. He began to share many testimonies to 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 um, Jeremy, and uh, it was overwhelming in the sense that in Jeremy's case, he felt uh, like uh, he felt like man, I must feel un I feel like unspiritual, man. I've never had all these, and he's over all these incredible stories. And Bobby turned to him and looked at him. He says, "You know why I'm sharing these things to you?" Jeremy, it's not to show that I'm more spiritual or anything. It's because there's an impartation when you uh, experience these things and you share out of that place. You actually release uh, the, uh, 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 the atmosphere, if you will, or you release the potential for them to enter into it because what you're sharing is out of a testimony of Jesus, out of your encounter with Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy, and the spirit of prophecy uh, it flows, and it opens up the windows, if you will, or the doors for those same things for you to enter into, for another person to enter into, as you get together and gather together. That's why it's so incredible to gather together as a spiritual people, uh, a people who have their minds on the things above, and talk about these things, and the angelic realm is there. The, the heavens are opened up. Uh, angels long to look into those things. You're sharing encounters with one another that you've had with others and you the atmosphere opens up. There's an opening of the atmosphere, the door if you will, like I shared, revelatory thoughts, images and pictures are, are likened to keys that open up doors that allow you to enter into a place and experience it. Well, as you share out of that testimony, as Bobby was sharing to Jeremy, that is uh, opening the door for him to enter in and experience the same things. And that's what uh, the, the power of that uh, revelation is, is so that we begin to talk about the things of the Spirit. To, as a group of people. Uh, I believe that's what they did in the school of prophets in the Old Testament. So as we begin to uh, uh, revolve around those things and share those things, communicate those things with one another, that the heavens open up, the doorways open up, the door of that prophetic realm, that reality begins to cut, hush, uh, settle down in our midst. And I've had that happen when I was talking with others and the presence came. It was like, whoa. 
We begin to see things. Uh, and so God wants to, us to bring, bring us into that place. You know, keys uh, were also rep, uh, or, uh, spoke of uh, the apostles and prophets. You know, in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, Jesus said that um, you have taken away the keys of knowledge. And he was talking in that context of the apostles and prophets and, and, and how they murdered the prophets and the apostles. They killed them. And he, he was saying that, you know, you have hindered others from entering the kingdom and experiencing it. You not only have you hindered them, but you have killed uh, those who he sent. He, you have killed the prophets and apostles because they brought revelation. They op brought it so that people can enter in and experience Jesus Christ. But they killed the apostles and prophets. They killed the keys. You have taken away the keys. So keys, we can become keys for others and to open up the door for others to enter in and experience the, some, the encounters that we have experienced and, and, and long to experience. And we should long for that. We should know, want to know Jesus experientially, uh, uh, know Him. That's the, the Greek word genosko, to know. Genosko it means to know deeply like a, in a relational way, experiential way. It's, uh, 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 of course, it's also um, the, the Hebrew word yada, meaning to know. Yada, to know in a deep way, like Adam knew Eve. It's an experiential, relational knowing. And God wants to bring us into these things, these deep things. And the, it's the worthy is the lamb, worthy is the line of the tribe of Judah to open up the scrolls to make them known uh, the the revelation uh, from heaven uh, to come down upon us and to to uh, to rest upon us the revelation of who he is and so I want to also go again go back to the eye the Hebrew word haza under his right eye that's also um, uh, the word that um, uh, represents again entering into visions seeing visions envisioning things in a vision, envisioning something in a vision, envisioning through visions. It's under the right eye for a purpose. The reason why is because it's the right side. I put it under the right side because it's the right side, the right hemisphere of the brain whereby spontaneity, vision, uh, imagery, creative pictures, the creative arts uh, predominantly comes through the right side. It's that visual side. It's that picture side. It's where the creativity, you have the left side is more analytical, logical, um, but they're both creative. You, you use, we use them both. Nobody's one right-sided person. God didn't create that, uh, <laughs> that we're, we're one-sided, a lobotomized Christian. Um, but it's under the right side. It's the right hemisphere. It speaks of the visual realm, the creative realm, the cr realm where arts create creativity and arts flow and that's why I put that Hebrew word under the right side of uh, the lion's eye and so you know it is him who, who, who he is the artist of artisans he's the one who gives gave me this picture he's the one that gives us visual arts creative ideas to do poetry to do dance to create movies uh, uh, to um, create inventions. Wisdom gives knowledge of witty inventions that would benefit mankind. And so the, the right side, again, it's the right hemisphere. It's a, a realm of where spontaneity, creative spontaneity, creative thoughts and pictures and uh, inspirational artistic ideas flow and uh, vision flows. And so like uh, I've quoted in the past, you know, the uh, um, uh, uh, it was Jim Driscoll. He says that your revelator is right next to your upper maker. Your, your revelator is right next to your maker upper. Jim Driscoll said, uh, your revelator is next to your maker upper. And he's referring to when God speaks, gives us revelation, vision. It, he does it through the, the, uh, um, the faculty the faculty of our imagination, our maker-upper. The maker-upper uh, is speaking of our imagination and God wants to s give us picture. He wants to speak His picture language to us and it shows up through our, the vehicle, through the uh, vehicle of our, of the faculty of our imagination. So don't put your imagination down. People get afraid of their imagination because they think uh, unsanctified imagination. Well, you can have a lot of 
parts of your being that are unsanctified. You can have unsanctified thoughts, unsanctified imaginations, unsanctified desires. But we are being sanctified from uh, uh, entirely spirit, soul, and body um, and being kept blameless by the Lord. And we don't have to fear that. We don't have to fear that. We, need, we, we can be open to it. That's a, a strategy of the enemy to uh, suppress the imagination, to make people afraid of the imagination, be fearful. And that's an area where he attacks, especially our artists and visionary people, he attacks them, their imagination, their thought life, to try and destroy them, which is something that he tried to do with me as well in my early days, to literally make me go crazy and to walk away from God, attacking me in my thought life and imagination, but thanks be to God, he brought me through that as well, and re healed, did an incredible healing restoration in my mind, in my imagination, and uh, one of the things, the key things that uh, he uh, the way he did that uh, was uh, um, putting an incredible hunger within me to meditate and to read and reread and study the scriptures. Um, uh, he gave me that desire, that passion, and I spent hours and hours meditating on the scripture. And as a result of that, the power uh, to heal, to restore, to deliver, to make whole uh, was released within my mind and, and strengthening my soul and my mind and restoring its uh, capacity to, to and strengthen it so that I can control my thought life and control um, what I my thinking and imagination and recognize what's of him and what's not and it was through that season that he ripped out and destroyed all strongholds and, uh, and patterns of thought house of houses of thinking within me that were built or implanted by the enemy he destroyed those things during that season and um, the, it was the sozo of God received with meekness the word sozo, engrafted, which is able to the word engrafted, which is able to sozo the soul, receive with meekness the word engrafted, uh, which is able to save, sozo the soul. So it was that season of uh, years and seasons where he brought that restoration of my thinking and my mind. And so again, friends, Jesus is that line of revelation in, in uh, the book of Revelation uh, 5, uh, chapter 5, verse 5. And he wants to release the spirit of revelation. He wants to just let the spirit of revelation flow like a mist and flood your eyes just as his eyes he is revelation he is the fullness of revelation of God he is the fullness of the revelation of the Father he wants to release keys to you he wants to give you revelatory thoughts and pictures and bring those uh, in your life so that you have the power to enter into uh, a, an experience with him that you will have access to enter into a place and experience that place um, uh, for yourself personally it's I'm reminded of a dream I had uh, and I've mentioned this dream in in other uh, videos I've done um, where in the dream I was in an encounter flying in space with a friend of mine uh, named Bill Bauer I was flying in space and we landed into this house and we landed in a house and we started walking in the house and from down in the hallway we saw a man coming towards us he had a real long beard and he came up to us and I looked at him I said you're one of the ancient ones aren't you and he gave uh, he had in both of his hands he had uh, uh, some liquid and some bread and he gave this to us and we began to eat the bread and drink the the liquid and um, and then I woke up out of the dream well I believe that we entered into a place <clears throat> Uh, it was an, a revelation, it was an experiential revelation that we entered into the house of an ancient one, if you will. Um, you know, oftentimes in dreams, houses represent uh, your life. Uh, or if you're in a house of another person, it's, it's something that you're sharing with them uh, that's part of them or something that's similar that they live in and, uh, and walk in, if you will. And there was something that we're, we're receiving that, that was like an impartation dream and we're receiving something that was upon this, uh, I believe this ancient one could have been a, a, a one who has gone before the Lord uh, that was a prophet or, or an ancient uh, prophet or something and that he was imparting something to us that we both uh, were blessed and um, you know privileged to take of and eat and drink and it, it was a substance you know these things are spiritual substance when Ezekiel was uh, in a vision and he, he saw a hand stretched out towards him in the hand there was a scroll and the, uh, the hand opened up the scroll and the voice said, take this and eat it. It's going to be sweet in your mouth like honey. 
but then it's going to be bitter and sour. And so there was, that was a, a real revelatory visionary experience. He was a, in a haza. He was, uh, he was in, uh, seeing something in a vision, envisioning something in a vision. He was entering into that visionary realm, uh, you know, the, uh, the, that uh, ecstatic realm. And uh, he was envisioning something in a vision. And the, the, he, another word uh, um, for he, uh, Hebrew word for vision is mara. And that, there's something about the, that, a visionary realm that uh, it can leave an impact on your spirit, on your physical body as well. In Ezekiel, in that in encounter, he saw that scroll. He ate. He also had many incredible experiences where he went into the visionary realm. He saw things, and at one uh, story where he was lifted up before the elders, and he began spinning around. But he was lifted up by a lock of his head, and he began spinning around uh, the elders of Israel, and and then he ended up at the river Kibar. And what was incredible is he, he was described that he was exhausted in his physical body that this visionary experience he went in was very it impacted him physically and that's something that can happen to us when we enter into a mara we went when we begin, we begin to envision something in a vision and get caught up in a deep vision and I believe there's an impartation there I believe that that dream that I had with my friend that we actually entered into a place spiritually as well uh, and received impartation and um, but yeah, yes, yeah, so we, we partook of the substance of heaven. And sometimes you take of something and you don't understand it right away. Sometimes it takes years and that thing begins to unfold and it begins to be your experience and, and it produces fruit. It brings forth the fruit. You know, things can be scrolls opened up, can be opened up and volumes can be imparted to you. Just like in our modern day and time, we can download information so much stuff in, in such a short amount of time we don't even know what's all in it and, and we can begin to open it up and sometimes things are opened up gradually progressively um, yes so I was given that uh, uh, we were given that bread and that wine and and you know God's uh, I believe God's ha since then has opened up many things to us uh, um, revelations and again the eye opener the maftayak the keys he's the giver of keys Jesus is the giver of the keys of, of openers the maftayak they open up your eyes to see what you did not see before they make you to see he makes you to see he makes you to uh, uh, understand to grasp to know and so again the line of revelation this is a uh, visual that God gave me and enabled me to um, uh, paint. Uh, it's it's an airbrush on canvas. Um, well, this the original was an airbrush on canvas, and it, it has an interesting story behind that uh, that I may go into at another time. But this is a duplication of that original airbrush on can, uh, on canvas. It's not the original, um, but it is a, a canvas print. And so uh, I hope you are encouraged and blessed, and that you are drawn uh, into Him that you're drawn into the one who gives revelation, that He is your focus, that He is the magnificent obsession of your life, that He pulls you into the deepest part of His heart and, and like John causes you to lean on His breast and to hear the beat of God's heart, to hear what He has to say to you, to hear what He whispers in your ear. Uh, you know, He doesn't have to yell it to you because you're close. It's not like you're far away and you're deaf and you have a hard head, like He yells it to you. No, He, he whispers spirit in your ear because your ear is attuned to hear and you want to listen you have a desire to listen and may God bless you and pour out his spirit have missed that blue mist of revelation father I pray you will bless them open up the eyes of their understanding as just as you did when you were walking along on the road to Emmaus with the disciples and they did not know you you they were uh, saddened and grieved and and uh, and then they began to uh, uh, tell you Lord that that what had all had happened about Jesus and they didn't even realize that they were talking to you Lord the resurrected one hallelujah <laughs> and then he opened up their eyes their mind it says their nous it's a Greek word now to know and to understand the scriptures and he began to explain he opened up their minds and began to explain from Genesis throughout uh, the timeline uh, regarding himself he began to give them the testimony of himself and they knew and they began to see it was him all along hallelujah <laughs> may you see the Lord may father you bless their eyes to see you to have an encounter a personal encounter to know you
you, yada you, to genosko you, to have an experiential knowledge of you. They're, they're personally they're themselves, Lord. You know, somewhere in the Old Testament it talks about, um, um, you know, they will all know the Lord. It, they will no longer say know the Lord or teach about knowing the Lord. They will all themselves know the Lord. So there is no uh, in, uh, special one that knows the Lord and the other ones don't really know Him. You have the door open for you. He is standing at the door knocking at your heart, our hearts, and saying, um, I stand at the door and knock. Whoever opens up their heart, I will come in and eat with them and they with me. He wants to impart Himself to us. He wants us to come into a place of heart-to-heart -heart intimacy with Him so that we can know Him better so that we can partake of the bread of life <laughs> so we can have an encounter with this line of revelation god bless you friends thanks for checking out light metaphors again i'm blessed to exercise the gift of god's grace given to me uh, as an administration of grace for others as well and i hope that you uh step into what god's uh, deposited into you and um employ that for others um to encourage them to strengthen them and exhort them to release healing healing and power to them to let the kingdom of heaven uh, come upon uh, them in Jesus name we'll see you again God bless you